How's it going guys? My name is Umbrella. Welcome back to a brand new edition of How Not to Suck at CSGO. In today's topic, we're going to cover one of CSGO's hardest but most rewarding challenges. Thank you to Nemesi and the 261 of you guys for suggesting the topic. In this video, I will attempt to give you guys my tips and knowledge on becoming a stronger clutch player. This is How Not to Suck at Clutching. Clutching is a skill not a lot of people possess and this is due to a lot of reasons. You might not have the play style where you put into a lot of clutch situations. You might lack the crucial game sense that will allow you to clutch out. You might get nervous in high pressure situations and lose from overstressing. Whatever your reason may be, there are ways to correct them and I'm going to give you guys some tips for doing that. When performing a clutch, there are two crucial things you must always focus on. Your mentality and your awareness. These two things are what's going to ensure that you stay in control for the duration of the clutch. I'm going to take some time to talk about these two skills and then I'm going to break down two recent clutches of mine and talk about my thought process as I go through the clutch. Mentality plays a humongous role in any successful clutch. If your head is in the wrong space, this clutch is not happening. Confidence, nervousness, and focus are the three biggest factors that affect your mentality during a clutch situation. When put in a clutch situation, your number one priority is to set your confidence straight. This means to simply believe in yourself. You need to truly believe that you're better than your opponents and that you can make this clutch possible. Now you ask yourself, how can I do that? Well, my trick is to never take any clutch seriously. If you treat each clutch attempt as a fun little challenge with nothing to lose, you should have all the confidence in the world to make it happen. The moment you start treating the clutch as a high pressure, winner takes all situation is the moment you start to doubt yourself and overthink each little thing which directly impacts your overall nervousness. Nervousness can actually come from a lot of things. Stage fright, pressure from teammates, adrenaline, wrong mindset, lack of self-worth, self-hatred, wondering if it's even worth living anymore, I mean what? All these things directly impact how nervous you are going into a clutch. A lot of my subs tell me they get adrenaline shakes during clutches which impacts their ability to carry one out. Now unfortunately these shakes are a result of your basic instinct fight or flight. It is your body thinking you're in danger and starts to raise your adrenaline levels. The best way to get rid of them is to simply play more and more so your body gets used to being in those situations. However, there are ways of subsiding this without putting hours into the game. One of the ways, like I mentioned earlier, is to never take each clutch seriously. If you ever watch me play and I get put into a 1vx situation, I always sarcastically say, yo, are you guys ready for this 1vx? And if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, I really don't stress about it. Dealing with the pressure from teammates is also quite easy to deal with. You can actually create a mute bind in each time you're in a clutch, activate it. The best way is to type this command in console. Bind with the key of your choice, followed by in quotations, toggle space voice underscore enable. You can also try various breathing exercises to calm down your heartbeat and bring down your blood pressure. If you successfully manage to reduce your nervousness, you'll quickly notice how much your focus level goes up. Focus is key during a clutch. The more focused you are, the better you'll be at analyzing the situation, making decisions, taking fights, etc. Put yourself in a focused state by isolating yourself from your teammates. This might mean ignoring them or muting them. Sitting up straight or getting into a comfortable position in your chair can also help out with focus and of course you want to always believe in yourself and don't be so nervous it's a damn game hopefully these tips can help keep your head clean and put you in a good mental state so you're able to stay aware of everything that's happening during your clutch Awareness is your best friend in a clutch. It is what lets you visualize the map and keep you one step ahead of your enemy. Now, I will admit that most of the information that you process during a clutch does come from simply playing a lot, but there is a lot of key information that can be absorbed through simple common sense. The moment you realize you're in a clutch, within the first few seconds, you must sort through all the current given information. So start with all the obvious stuff first, like how much time you have left, how many enemies are alive, where did your last teammate die, where is the bomb, what kind of utility do you have, your HP, your positioning, you should have all of that logged in your head within the first few moments of your clutch. Once you find your bearings, you can then begin sorting through the indirect information. So this might include recalling your teammates calls, recalling where you saw the enemy last, which possible rotation the enemy might pick, how many players are low on health, where might the opera be, etc. So you might think that this information is hard to process on a spot, but this is the kind of information you already think about during non-clutch situations, except now it matters a lot more. The more complicated reads might include knowing the timing of rotations, the timing to get to a nearest site, reading the possible positions the enemy might play given the situation, reading a possible stack on a site, knowing at which moments you might get pushed, etc. I mean yeah, reading the enemy is a skill that takes a lot of hours of playing the game to truly get good at, but that is why we're going over this, so you guys can start to think differently in clutches and therefore learn these skills a lot quicker. To stay one step ahead of your enemy, you have to think two steps ahead of yourself, if that makes sense. This means 
means every decision that you make has to be calculated. After you process as much of the information as you could, it is time to make a plan as to how you're going to execute. For example, as a CT, your first thought might be from which position do you want to retake the site. Then from there, you have to think about the possible post plan setup of the enemies. Then you have to think in what order you're going to clear those positions. As you're doing all that, you have to think about the bomb timer. Do you have time to take it slow or do you have to work fast? As a T, it is a little bit more complex since you have to figure out which site to plant at. You have to figure out which site will be more heavily guarded, which site is easier to take and is it easier to defend after plant? Do you have the utility to help you? And so on. Essentially, there are a little bit more variables and predicting when it comes to T clutches. So once you figure that out, create a plan on how you want to take it. For example, you decide to go B on Inferno. You know you have a smoke, so you use it for CT cross. Once on site, you will fully clear it and choose exactly where you're going to plant. As you're planting, think about your after plant position and which fight you're going to take first. Now, fortunately, because each clutch is purely situational, it is literally impossible to give an example for each one, but the process is the same. Devise a plan, think at least two steps ahead, and let the process handle the rest. If the game pulls a sneaky on you, don't panic. Improvise, adapt, overcome. So if you haven't guessed already, clutches are all mental. Sure, you still have to know how to aim to win, but it's the mentality and how you think is what separates good clutch players from mediocre ones. I'm actually gonna do something completely different in this video. I'm gonna analyze a couple of my favorite clutches and go play by play to see how I made them work. So this first clutch is a 1v4 ace clutch that I got a couple of weeks ago. This round I decided to lurk in T-Con while my team decides to rush B on an eco. My clutch pretty much begins after my entire team runs into a blender at B site and I get the first frag onto the oblivious enemy. So as soon as I get the first kill, I know they now know exactly where I am. So there's literally no point in playing slow. Instead, I try to find as many people as I can before they get into a better position to defend the bomb. So what you see me doing here is clearing as many angles as quickly as I can and hopefully trying to bait out a shot. Luckily for me, the guy in hell decides to swing right out as I clear that angle. So I get a couple of nice tags on him. After the fight, I climb on top of the train to be hidden from the hell guy and to have the high ground against the two most dangerous angles, ladder and connect. So in a 1vx situation, you should never be caught up in one fight slash angle. Always scan for your next target even if you didn't finish the previous fight. At this point, I get a huge break because I hear the guys from B site push upper. I can hear one guy go into white halls and another guy go into ladder room. So I kill the swinging ladder guy and at this point, I turn straight back to hell to finish the other fight. I actually get really lucky here with the HE because the dingus decides it's a good idea to hang out in the same spot after getting tagged literally a few seconds before this. And bam, just like that, it is a 1v2, I have 80 HP, 1 minute left with a smoke and a molly. The best thing to do now is to take it slow and to try to recover the bomb. As I'm walking to B, I keep scanning my surroundings to check for flanks. Because earlier I heard a guy push white halls, I have to make sure that I keep that in mind. You should never assume the enemies are just guarding the bomb. They could be going for some dumb plays or flanks, you never really know. So as I'm walking into connector, I actually made some noise by accident and I'm just like, fuck it, I might as well just start running. Now before I actually run into B, my goal here is to clear every possible angle I can because B site is massive and they could literally be anywhere. After I clear the last angle, I make a quick wide swing. I find the first guy on ramp. I whiffed a bit on my spray, but I actually prevailed in the end and I got the kill with a little bit of HP left. And right about here is where I get my second big break. The last guy makes a shitload of noise trying to flank. A quick Molotov on connector and I knew I won the round at this point. So this is where I create a quick plan. Grab the bomb, plant before the molly ends, get into a post plant, question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. I know he's expecting me to plant default so I pull a sneaky on him and I plant on the right side of the bomb train so I get all of the space to hold from. My decision to run oil is quite simple. If I can get there before he makes it out of connector, I am in the sweet spot of holding the bomb, which is exactly what happens. Now we play the waiting game. He actually tosses the smoke onto the bomb and I make the mental note to swing right before it pops so I can see if he's on the bomb or not. Now this decision could have got me killed but luckily he taps the bomb in the smoke and at that point it's the easiest spray down of my life. This next clutch is coincidentally also on train and it was during a scrim with my team. 
So I'm the Ivy player on this map, so I guess I got a nice little flank going on right here. There's not much analyzing in this one. I come up straight behind them and using a little bit of trigger discipline, I try to find as many schmucks as I can. I get the first two dudes and I manage to see one guy get into hell. My next task is to find where the second guy is. So like before, I try to peek as many angles as possible, all while keeping an eye on hell, where I know for a fact one guy is. I can actually take my time on this one because I have a kit and the bomb timer isn't popping anytime soon. Walking up by red train, I actually spot his leg and somehow get the kill. Now it's a 1v1. This is where I make the decision to just go for the bomb. I know he isn't going to risk running around to Olaf, which means he will be forced to swing from Sandwich, and so if I stick to the fuse, I might have just enough time before he's in the angle to shoot me. He actually ends up tossing a useless molly which doesn't even reach the ground, and that mistake gives me just enough time to defuse. Easy. Before I close off this video, I want to leave you guys with some final tips. When it comes to taking fights, you should always isolate each fight into a 1v1. If you notice how I take all of my fights in these clutches, I make sure to use my surroundings as cover from other potential angles. I never stay overexposed in one area and I try to only be exposed to one angle at a time. Your second best friend is your crosshair placement. Keep that crosshair on head level at all times. Also, don't be afraid to talk to your teammates. They might actually have some valuable information from time to time. The key thing is, is to never let them make decisions for you. Take in the information and make the decision on your own. That way, nobody but you will be responsible for how the clutch goes. And lastly, manage your time. If you have the time, use it. And if you don't, well, get a move on. I see so many people fail clutches because they fail to manage their time correctly. And then they run out of options. In a game that's all about timing, time management is pretty damn important. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover on this topic. The big thing about clutching is you can never really practice particular skills to become better, but you can change how you think during a clutch to make you a stronger clutcher. I hope I gave you guys some nice information that will help you guys become a better clutch player or at the very least, a smarter one. Let me know how this video helps you and if you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate if you left a like and shared this video. As always, leave some suggestions for tutorials you want to see and I'll do my best to make them. Now before I go, I'll be resuming streaming on Twitch sometime in late September or early October. So if you want to be part of my streams, make sure you go follow my Twitch. The link will be down in the description along with my Twitter and my Instagram. That is going to do it for me for today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Blonde Barrel and remember, be water my friends.